Midjourney v6 is good, very good. Sam Altman posts a blog about how to win at life. And I gotta say, there's a reason why this guy is running OpenAI. The question is, can he live forever? So I'm not gonna go into huge amounts of detail on Midjourney v6. I'll just say I, I love it. I've been using Midjourney for a long time. It's my favorite AI art generation software. And it's very impressive to see where it's going. Take a look at this. So this is an oil painting with thick brush strokes. That's part of the prompt. So as somebody pointed out, Midjourney V6 will actually render the paint clumping together and raising off the canvas in 3D, which is referred to as impasto or paste-like. And I think these are the little details that really make this stand out. Here's a few that I did in Midjourney. And I gotta say, I'm very impressed with the lighting on this one. Notice the blue light falling from the back, reflected in the little droplets of water. If you've ever owned a cat and it got wet, you know, this is very, very accurate. Like it'll have those little droplets that kind of just hover on top of the fur. And take a look at this little necklace or whatever this is that's hanging off of the spherical shape. Notice the lighting is accurate. The blue lighting from this side, the reflection, the reflection of the fire here. And also notice that there's a blue light reflected in the eyes and also reflected here in the, in the ball. There's a blue light that the cat is looking at, basically the perspective of the camera. And the fire is reflected in the eye, in this collar, and in this necklace. Here's another kitty, not quite as cute. And one thing I gotta say about this is it feels like we're going beyond photorealistic. Whatever photorealistic was, we passed it. And now we're getting into a land where it's as good as a real photo, but with more, more detail, more art, more immersiveness. So this is sort of the first result it returned from the upscale. And I gotta say, it's phenomenal. I wanted to try it because there's a lot of images of cats. There's not a lot of images of these hairless cats with tattoos on them. So this is kind of a challenging prompt. Here's the Mad Hatter in the style of Van Gogh. One thing that's very impressive is how well you can describe features of a person's face, for example. So this is a Portuguese woman, big lips, high cheekbones, square jaw, curly hair, tan skin, and big top front teeth. If you can describe a person, you can probably get a pretty good facsimile of how they look like. And this is without any style changes. If you want a more of a pastel painting, this is it. Here's a Renaissance style sketch of the human brain. This is leagues above anything I've seen before. If I zoom out a little bit, as you can see, it's just absolutely phenomenal. It seems like they're pulling a little bit from Lord of the Rings. This seems a little bit like Elvish, but I gotta say this is uh, very beautiful. Here's another sort of variation on that theme. I mean, these little details are just incredible, I think. Here's a whale shark in space. Do you know what these things are? These are real pictures, by the way, not AI generated. This is a siphonophore, a collection of underwater creatures that merge together to become one thing, kind of like a colony. In my opinion, one of the most terrifying things that live underwater. Here's a siphonophore cat. Here's another take on that theme. And finally this. I gotta say I'm impressed because... There is no image out there of a siphonophore cat. It's taking two very different concepts and kind of merging it together. And I gotta say, it's pretty good. The fact that it made the whiskers into like the long flowy strands. I gotta say, that's an A+. Also, it got a lot better at spiders. It used to be not quite this terrifying. Also, according to Midjourney, a lot of the junk text that you would have to add to sometimes get better results, you no longer have to do it. So for example, if you've seen a lot of these prompts, they'll say things like, 4K, award-winning photography, stunning detail. It seems like you no longer have to add that to get strong results. So me personally, I'm a big fan of Midjourney. It's a small team out of San Francisco. And from what I know, it seems like they're doing it the right way. And I wish them the best of luck. I do believe that the greatest image that Midjourney has ever created has already been done. And it's going to be very hard to top this one. You might have seen it. Pope Francis wearing a buffer jacket. This, if you haven't heard, went viral in 2023 before the idea of AI images was as well known as it is right now. It's absolutely phenomenal because there's no reason why it could not be real. It's a warm jacket to wear. It's perfectly reasonable to wear. Nothing about this image is obscene. It's perfectly believable. It's very possible that the Pope accidentally created this hip hop look without realizing it. I wore FUBU clothing in high school for a while before someone explained to me why maybe I shouldn't. Next up, Sam Altman saying, hope this is useful for people who spend the holidays thinking about what to go to work on in 2024. Always one of my favorite times of year. And indeed, this is a time that for a lot of us, myself included, is a time of introspection, thinking about the future, maybe slowing down a little bit. In my case, being sick as a dog for the last three days, that's why I haven't been posting. But he made a post saying what I wish someone had told me. I gotta say, I like how he writes. I like how he thinks. He tends to take certain ideas certain concepts and connect them in ways that make them really insightful. 
He's able to sort of distill intelligence and present it simply. So here are some Sam Altman thoughts. What's shocking here is that he can capitalize letters. I was not aware of this. Number one, he says optimism, obsession, self-belief, raw horsepower, and personal connections are how things get started. You do tend to see obsession a lot in people who tend to succeed against all odds. So it's something I've noticed. Cohesive teams, the right combination of calmness and urgency, and unreasonable commitment are how things get finished. Long-term orientation is in short supply. Try not to worry about what people think in the short term, which will get easier over time. It's easier to do hard things that matter. Incentives are superpowers. Set them carefully. Warren Buffett often says something similar. Concentrate your resources on a small number of high conviction bets. This is easy to say, but evidently hard to do. You can delete more stuff than you think. Tim Ferriss was probably the first person that introduced me to this concept of the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, which a lot of people I think don't fully understand. The idea that 80% of all your outputs, your results, your success, your whatever, the things that you want, really truly only come from only 20% of inputs, the thing that you do. Being busy fighting on all fronts is a form of laziness, mental laziness, the inability to stop, prioritize, and then focus on the important few. The weird thing about that idea is it's kind of fractal, I guess, that once you eliminate the unessential 80% and you zoom in on what's important, that rule still applies. Only 20% of those inputs will create 80% of the output. Six, communicate clearly and concisely. Fight BS and bureaucracy every time you see it and get other people to fight it too. Outcomes are what counts. Don't let process excuse bad results. Next, he's talking about recruiting and superstars are even more valuable than they seem, but you have to look at their net impact. I think probably an example of this is high-performing jerks might not be overall the best choice. Fast iteration can make up for a lot. It's usually okay to be wrong if you iterate quickly. Plans should be measured in decades. Execution should be measured in weeks. He says this a lot. The compounding effect of doing stuff fast and doing more stuff kind of creates this flywheel effect that accelerates whatever you're doing faster than people realize. Combining that with concentrating your resources makes you unstoppable. Don't fight the business equivalent of the laws of physics. You might be referring to uh, taking outside investment when you need to, in the case of OpenAI. Inspiration is perishable and life goes by fast. Inaction is a particularly insidious type of risk. Scale often has surprising emergent properties. Compounding exponentials are magic. In particular, you really want to build a business that gets a compounding advantage with scale. I'm in the process of reading The Flywheel Effect by Jim Collins. He was the author of Good to Great, amongst other things. And this has a lot to do with, I think, this idea of compounding exponentials. It's a little bit different. The flywheel effect refers to, for example, if Amazon getting more products listed creates more customers, more customers creates more vendors, more vendors creates cheaper pricing, more customers, more products, more vendors, etc. Cheaper pricing, etc. It's kind of like this idea that each push is a domino that creates more of an effect and that effect is compounding on itself. Then we have get back and keep going and working with great people is one of the best parts of life. Interestingly, Sam Altman sounds like he's taking metformin as part of his anti-aging routine. Now, I've been hearing this concept for probably well over a decade now. A lot of people in the Silicon Valley in the Bay Area do talk about this. Tim Ferriss had a few great episodes that he did kind of on and around that subject with Dr. Peter Atia about fasting, metformin, etc., about rapamycin, as well as this clip with Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who, by the way, everybody loves Dr. Rhonda Patrick, but it sounds like a lot of people are looking to metformin and similar things for a form of anti-aging. It's interesting that Sam Altman is on that bus as well, as well as healthy eating, exercising, and getting enough sleep. He also invested in retro biosciences, which seems interesting. AI Explained covered this a little bit, but it is interesting that we've been hearing about these longevity treatments for a while, and nothing super new or interesting has really emerged. I mean, we've learned more about certain things we can do to live longer. A lot of them are lifestyle things we can do, right? Work out, eat right, avoid sugar and processed food, etc. But the language around this, these new treatments, it, it is changing. Here's an abstract from something on PubMed talking about the idea of cell rejuvenation by partial reprogramming. There is this immortal jellyfish, which I've heard of before. Here's a picture of it on Octonauts. Octonauts and the immortal jellyfish. By the way, if you have kids, Octonauts is terrific. It's vastly superior to most of the other garbage out there that's being marketed to kids. 
But I think the point is, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but it's able to almost go back to being a, a kid, a child again, go back to its young self. They appear to achieve biological immortality through the cycles of epigenetic rejuvenation that silences developmental genes. And they're asking, could the same sort of cycle, could it confer, could it give biological immortality to mammals, to humans? So it looks like Sam Altman is investing money into the company that's behind some of this research. When a startup called Retro Biosciences eased out of stealth mode in mid-2022, it announced it had secured it had secured $180 million to bankroll an audacious mission to add 10 years to the average human lifespan. It had set up its headquarters in a raw warehouse space near San Francisco just a year before, bolting shipping containers to the concrete floor to quickly make lab space for the scientists who had been enticed to join the company. Retro said it would prize speed and tighten feedback loops as part of an aggressive mission to stall aging or even reverse it. I'm sure Sam Altman loved hearing that. Prize speed, tighten feedback loops, aggressive mission. That's Those are words I think he likes. But it was vague about where its money had come from. Dun, dun, dun. At the time, this retro biosciences, it was a mysterious startup whose investors remain anonymous. But now the MIT Technology Review can reveal that the entire sum was put up by Sam Altman, a 37-year-old startup guru and investor who is the CEO of OpenAI. So it looks like he he invested largely in two companies outside of OpenAI. So he runs OpenAI and he's investing in companies that have two very ambitious goals. One is limitless energy and the other one is extended lifespan. So Helion Energy, in which he's poured more than $375 million. And the other is this Retro Biosciences, which he put in $180 million. He said, I basically just took all my liquid net worth and put it into these two companies. Now, the reason why this is important is Sam Altman used to run Y Combinator. He once described what he did or what these investors do as attacking problems that are, while very big, very important, the solution tends to be far away and require lots and lots of capital. So if you think about it, there's not that many people outside of governments or large corporations that could invest in something that takes a long time to see any results and requires a lot of capital in the meantime. So he was saying that the competition in that space isn't that great. There's not that many people looking to pour billions or hundreds of millions of dollars into something that is far, far away. But if you can call the shots correctly, the payoffs are incredible. And Sam Ottman's history seems to suggest that he's incredibly good at calling those shots correctly. So I do hope that he's correct in this case with virtual biosciences, because we've heard this before. Well, that's it for me today. We're approaching the new year, and I think 2024 will be bigger than ever. I can't wait to see the things that get discovered. We are living in unprecedented times. I wish you the best for Christmas, for New Year's, for whatever else you're celebrating. And even if you don't celebrate anything this time of year, I just wish you still have a great time. Relax, recover. This is the calm before the storm. So let's all recharge and be ready for some wild stuff next year. My name is Wes Ropp. Thank you for watching.